Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum salam Should we then do any meditation on Ikra Bismi Rabbik or should we recite it in a specific number? Please forgive me. No, we should just take the readings and the writings, <coughs> meditate. Everything is based on the foundation with your authority. If you don't pass that authority, there's no going above it. That was the gist of this talk that if you really want to reach to Allah you have to go to the authority of that ulul am that's in charge of you. They have an authority. Did you reach their authority? Then you can't go above that. If you don't go through that door, you don't go any higher. You can think you are but you're not in that level to go higher. So that becomes then just the world of imagination. So that's why this is the, the world of tafakkur so that they're bringing themselves to the ulul am to the person of authority that is their guide. They have to go through the clearance of that guide, connect with the guide, take all these teachings, iqra bi ismi rabbik and ask that, expand my heart into the understanding of lordship and the understanding of authority and expand their hearts. And they take the teachings that come and they meditate for days on the understanding. And they ask to connect, they do their awrad, they do the breathing and that the energy within their hearts to become stronger and stronger in their connection. And that becomes the understanding that they have to be strong in the presence of that authority and that their, ha their hearts to expand in its understanding and its lights. As a result of that expansion then every time they look at Rabbahu, Rabb, 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 Rabb then they understand, oh Allah is, is continuously using Rabb in the Qur'an as authority not worshipness. The example we gave of Surat al-Yusuf, Surah 12 verse 42, Sayyidina Yusuf is talking to the two prisoners, so one you're going to have this problem and one this going to be good news and the king is going to call this one and then as he's being called to go to the king. He tells Allah's saying, this is my most beloved surah, I love this surah and these are Allah telling us these verses. And that Surah Yusuf a Prophet of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Beloved Surah of Allah is telling the prisoner that mention me to your Rabb. And then shaitan caused the prisoner to forget to mention Sayyidina Yusuf to his Rabb. So Surah Yusuf, Alif, Lam, Ra is the secrets of rububiyyah and understanding authority. When we understand this word has an iman, so just meditating on this Rabb, this concept of authority, authority, then we understand, Subhun Qudusun Rabbuna wa Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh <coughs> means all these different zikrs, all these different secrets. That it's not worshipness. Allah wants us to clearly understand authority. Atiyaullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. If you just keep saying Atiyaullah, you forgot then Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. This now you're incomplete. And that's the, the childish nature of these other groups. Everything just Atiyaullah, stop talking. 
No, Allah has the whole way of reaching realities because then you're going to try to get into the presence of these realities and you're going to keep saying Allah and that's big haram because it's not Allah. If you're in the presence of Prophet it's Sayyidina Muhammad it's not ilahiyya, it's not divinity, it's Prophet So it has to be clear from now, worshipness is only for Allah But the heavenly kingdom, oh there's many realities within this kingdom and you didn't reach anywhere near to Allah you've just entered in now into the kingdom. So this is immensely important and they meditate on that inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Shaykh Wa alaykum salam How can one know the name he has been dressed with? We just described yes <laughs> Yeah, you have to go through the authority, get the meditation book and start connecting. Right? How can you how can you go all the way to the top if you don't come through the door? So, you know, asking about like, how do I get the things in the room? How do I get all this? How do I get that? How do I get that? That these teachings are to entice people into the room. So the question on how to get in, how to get all those things was very simple: is go through the door, make your connection. Do your muraqabah, get your meditation book, keep reading about it, keep understanding how to meditate, how to bring the connection and that light within ourselves and how to have a very strong connection so that you're allowed into that reality. And at that time that would become clear to you on, on your approach into the reality. But if we're outside and say, how am I going to get all those things in there? You're not. Because you have to come inside, you can't just… they don't take it from inside, throw it out for you. You have to come inside into the reality and that's why the basis of all our teaching is tafakkur. If the person doesn't have a strong connection then the realities are not making sense. Some people say, okay, I sit down, I think about this and think about that but it's not just about thinking. You're not coming to this reality by your head. But you're trying to meditate and say, I know nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and address me from your light. If you can open your heart, they begin to send the knowledge as a download, right? So if I send you really important document but all you're interested in doing is just reading it, what happens when you read it? You're gonna misquote it in about five minutes because you just read it. But what if you could download the article and you download it into your, into your heart? When you download it, you can retrieve it at any moment and reference it in everything you say because it's downloaded into your heart. But people just want to read because of you know the drive-through society, everything wants everything fast, 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 I'm not gonna get there fast. And they just want to read and then they read so many things but then when they tried to tell you what they read, like how did you understand about this? It sounds like more like you know it's a mixture of you know a couple of cherries and bananas and mixture of here and there and add some other stuff into that. That's not a download but the one whom opens their heart and downloads, they almost tell you verbatim what you talked about and even add things into it into the depth. Why? Because they're downloading, they're not reading, they're not using their head. They're retrieving the information through their heart and that they can listen again and again, take notes and meditate, contemplate and in their connection they're receiving the understandings in their heart and they keep doing, keep doing until the knowledges keep expanding and they can become overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge and information that's coming because this is only just the tip of the iceberg of the knowledges on this subject of what the audience can take. If other people come of a, of a higher understanding then they would go deeper into the understandings. So this is a, a, a very deep process. I saw one of the big, big shaykhs, outwardly Sunni shaykhs and he had to put out a video 
says, SubhanAllah that Allah is in, in the word Allah, then he put Alif Allah, the Lam Lam Ha Allah, then Lam Ha Allah, then Hu Allah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of that's that's one level, most highest level, Masiwa Allah. Lam Lam Ha is actually Prophet and creation. And Allah's only in the alif, and that's only limited to our understanding. Because Allah is a is a is a wanting to be known but will never be known. So you can see the, the level of uloom and knowledge is something completely different. And that's what they say, Mahsiwa Allah, all that's other than Allah. In the kalam of alif, lam, lam, ha, lam, lam, ha is creation, is not Allah. The two lambs are for the mulk, mulki wa malakut, and the ha is for hidayat and guidance. Allah's izzah and might is in the alif and it floats away so that you'll never know it. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Do the four holy companions represent or take on an attribute of Allah? Take an attribute of Allah? Everyone has an has a attribute of Allah as a wajah that governs them. So no doubt everyone has an attribute. But I don't know specifically what the what we're trying to to get at with them. But the the reality of the companions that was described was the reality in which they assist Prophet to bring creation towards Allah's divine the presence. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is to transform their character, free them from shaitan and be a support like the cane for them. And we went into that and, and the reality of say no more Farooq to, to fight for what's right and stand for the truth and the inner struggle and the inner battle Sayyidina Uthman Jami al Qur'an and Majeed is then to bring knowledge and realities from Holy Qur'an upon the servant Imam <coughs> Ali Salam and the power and the hand of the Divine to come upon the servants. So these are from the oceans of Kawthar dressing and flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad for his nation. So these are four springs of reality for his nation so that they keep the sunnah and the way and that these holy companions bring the servants towards guidance and to be rightly guided and to follow the sunnah and the way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And all of that is for Allah because Allah's love for Prophet wanting to be known through the reality of Prophet So imagine then the immensity of the task and how much Allah loves that, to guide to that which He loves. So this is an immense, immense realities upon these souls and the, what their soul's responsibilities are inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, recently there was a video posted about Sayyidina Uthman and Zul Noon. Can you please expand upon this? <laughs> he has the two lights that we talked about. That Prophet physically gave two daughters to Sayyidina Usman Jami al Qur'an, Usman al Qani alayhi salam. And that signified the, physically the two lights that he carries from the reality of Prophet. And that uh, in the talks on insan and the two noons of insan, he carries that reality from the presence of Prophet to Yunus, Sayyidina Yunus's reality. So the, the reality of the companions dress the Prophets of Allah 
because he's describing that my my awliya warith al-anbiya of Bani Israel are the inheritors of the prophets of Bani Israel and all his companions are awliya. They're immensely powerful saints. So this is the source of, of all prophecies. Means from Allah to Prophet to 124,000 holy companions, that goes to 124,000 Prophets of Allah and Messengers. So that immense dress and, and dressings are from their lights and from their realities that they reflected from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi for one and a half month my heart is in frequent sadness and I can't seem to understand the reason um, the sadness is getting too much to bear can you please guide? Mm -hmm. I think people may be in a sadness just by some issues within themselves so there shouldn't be a sadness for a servant whom submits to Allah There's no need to have a sadness, the one whom is content in Allah's will, nothing to be sad about. So same people probably asked about too many testings. So there's not too many testings, it's just too many opportunities for growth. If you keep looking at everything negative, uh, everything going to be negative. So I think in certain countries they've been trained to think is everything negative. Everything's bad, everything's bad, everything's sad, everything's horrible. So if that's the case we have to always retrain and say, no it's, these are opportunities. That every test that Allah gives is an opportunity to grow, to be purified, to be perfected. Once we're content with what Allah has given to us, our faith has become strong then they can rise above physical situations. You know the servants of Allah they're not in want and need. Why? Because if you reach a state of servanthood they're content and as a result of being content whatever their heart wants Allah sends to them because they reach a state of not wanting. So whatever their need from appears for them. So to reach to that state then we have to train ourselves to be content with Allah's will and desires for us is because out of love Allah loves us so He gives to us or abstains from something out of love and knowing best for what's best for us. So then this is a very important state that the servant has to be content and have sabr jameel, beautific patience. So that Nabi Muhammad al-Mustafa dresses them with a beautific fragrance. If Allah smells that fragrance upon the servant, anything their heart wants opens for them. But to reach that point is hard because people are being trained on uh, social media to want everything, want everything, want everything then of course they're sad. Because they look at that they're not eating that, they look there they're not driving that, they look that they're not wearing that, they look that they don't look like that. That's what shaitan is trying to do, he's trying to destroy the servants and their faith. If the servant didn't have any of those things, 50 years, 100 years ago they didn't have any understanding. You thought in the, in the village they thought they were Donald Trump because in the village they were great, I have two goats and a cow and I do it anything I want, I'm like Donald Trump in my village because they didn't have anything to compare with. People found contentment with their Lord. But what's the purpose of social media? Mm, to not be content, to, to want so many things through their eyes because the eyes are hungry. So they leap, look, 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 look what happens, they become hungry and when somebody's hungry they're not content with the food they have in front of them to eat. And shaitan knows what he's doing so this is shaitan's guiles and tricks and, and games. 
So then the person whom having these types of difficulties, turn off your social media other than just posting the articles. Turn it off, don't look at it, don't, don't build that desire that you can't control and make your meditation and your contemplation so Allah can open His heavenly kingdom. He's not going to open up satanic kingdom for servants, He's going to open His heavenly kingdom in which the servant closed their eyes and enters into paradises and lights and energies and knowledges. And Allah said, this is the compensa compensation, this is what I want to give you. And then they learn servanthood and the realities of servanthood inshaAllah. And anyone else feeling apprehension and nervousness then you know live a life of preparedness. Make sure you have money at home saved, make sure you have gold at home saved, make sure you have food at home saved. At any moment difficulties could arise and the servant has to be prepared. But alhamdulillah people listening to us uh, have heard that a long time. To be prepared, be prepared, you never know when a day comes. So, oh, I didn't get any money at home, yeah I didn't think it was going to really happen. So, okay, that's not our problem. We told people, make sure you have money at home. They may come a day in which the bank on Friday says, sorry we're closed and we'll be closed for the next few months. What will you do? Absolutely nothing. So, make sure you have food at home, supplies and, and you know things that are necessary. If you, have, if you need assets and, and, and possessions, the only possession worth anything is gold and silver and that you have an amount of gold and silver as a safety for ourselves in case something happens. This is Allah's ancient currency, not these papers they don't mean anything to anyone. But Allah's currency is gold and silver, so we keep it for the time of Sayyidina Mahdi that uh, awliya would save gold for the time of Sayyidina Mahdi May time come where you can't do anything with their papers or even their technologies and cryptos but they need that gold to get to the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi So this is all a part of faith and the preparation for faith that we're prepared and leave the rest for Allah You put your faith and trust in Allah after you took your step and then قُلَنَا يُسِيبَنَا وَكَتَابُ اللَّهُ Nothing will happen to the believers that's not written in the book of Allah It means then they're very close with Prophet who is the, the walking book of Allah Sayyidina Mahdi Sallallahu Alaikum Shaykh Wa alaykum as I'm a young French student, I'm contacting you as I'm interested in the Islamic faith and more specifically in Sufism, the Sawaf. I've been reading and learning about Islam for several years and it's very interesting faith and I would love to learn more about Naqshbandis to ask some questions and even get in touch and participate in some activities. How can I find spiritual guidance? I'm feeling quite lost in religion. Furthermore, how can I get closer to God? Alhamdulillah, Allah guided you to the channel and to the way you helped me at NurMuhammad.com and uh, they start sending out a series of emails for you on how to connect, what channels to watch and to take your spiritual path by watching the videos, connecting to the live zikr and alhamdulillah many foreigners, non-Muslim background and this is the way, this is the way of Sufism so it's not something new. This is probably 80% of the students are coming from non-Muslim backgrounds, non-Islamic backgrounds. And that's why the teaching is in English and the teaching is very general, in, in very general terms of energy and, and uh, meditation so that they can come and understand it and relate to it. So alhamdulillah take your path then come slowly towards that reality. Don't try to find it in every corner, say, I'll go here, I'll go there, I'll go… Try to stick to one way of learning and understanding because not every association is going to be the same. You may enter into think something is the same and it's not. So once you find something, try to adhere to it, learn from it and, and to grow yourself from its reality inshaAllah. As Sayyidi. 
See, there's a technology that Harvard students created that vibrates and transfers thoughts to your mind. If this is physical, what is the reality in the world of light? Yeah, these are all the manipulations of energy. <clears throat> and the movement of energy and all the teachings that we've given on understanding the energy beings, how they can uh, cast into your mind thoughts. So this is everywhere. This is all in Islamic teachings that we've been trying to teach people is if you think in relation to energy, how much is happening now? How much the negative energy brings down the vibration of people? How much the positive energy is supposed to raise the vibration of people? How when you make your muraqaba, the shaykh's energy comes to you and begins to communicate with you into your mind and into your heart. So of course shaitan is going to then develop the same system. Where he can say, oh we have a device that will start to broadcast into your mind. So it's not really a device, it's a jinn coming and start was waswasing and whispering to you. So what would be your protection against their energy machines and energy devices is your taweez and the taweez is upon the home and your strong connection with your tafakkur and your meditation because they're going to start to fight with their energy and interfere and to try to possess people with their energy. So the, this is all, if you relate it to energy then you see how much you've been trained from these teachings. They say it's a device, we tell you it's a jinn. So this is obvious, you're surprised they have a machine that you want to start whispering and you know, go kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. It's not the machine, it's a jinn that came into your house and start talking into your ear. Because every machine is an energy and every energy is these guys, the jinn, the jinn world. So then defend yourself from their ability to come near you and to broadcast to you. One, through your taweez, ruqya is the sign of humility when we put these divinely gifted realities all around us as a protection. and to do all the practices and then build our connection with the spiritual world. So that we have the ulul amr with us, the shaykh with us, we're connecting and bringing that energy and that environment to stop that attack and stop that inter, inter, intervening effect upon humanity that they're trying to do. So no doubt, no doubt they have all of these and uh, we don't need to be convinced of it. Anytime somebody talks about electronics just use the word jinn so that you say, oh, oh we're familiar with this, yeah. When I tell you that they have portals, what's a portal? The jinn. This we have many from uh, the stories of awliya. The jinn would come and steal people into their realm and say, Abdul Qadir Jailani Qaddasallahu Siru called the king of jinns and said, go get him. And immediately the jinns went to and brought the person right back out of that realm. What is that then? It's a portal. So when these creatures start to intervene too much into this dunya, then this is the concept. So they use technology as a word to try to explain it. Why don't we go back to basics and don't use those words, just use jinn. Your facts is a jinn. It takes your paper and immediately sends it into India and says, here. Your mobile phone is a jinn. He takes your voice, imitates it on the other side, <laughs> huh? right? Because this is the two technologies that were given to Sayyidina Sulaiman We'll photocopy the throne, it takes a bit of time because they were going to steal it and bring it. But the one of the book said, by the time you blink your eyes we duplicated and brought it. So it means that the Ahlul Kitab and Ahlul Marifa much more powerful than the jinn. And that's why they're training, make your connection, make your connection. These jinn tricks and jinn magics are going to start happening. But your connection if you done it right 
made the connection, when Allah authorized its opening and its uh, empowerment, it's like laying the wires and foundation and power plant. As soon as Allah flipped the switch that it's on, that they have shown themselves and now this battle begins. But you have to have been wired for all of that. Then when Allah releases Izzatullah, Izzatul Rasul wa Izzatul Mu'mineen, then that, that power begins to flow into the system. And whatever these shaitans do then Allah will authorize awliya to do differently. So their technology, just say jinn and it all makes sense. Portals, oh yeah of course the jinn will then make a circle somewhere and move people in and out of dimensions, realms and locations, move them in an instant. Taking to their dimension harder than moving you instantly to New York. So these are the frequencies, they move through a frequency and change and we gave talks on the veils of frequencies. If you're an energy being and you don't start training in the world of light to raise your frequency and make a forward movement, you know you make a horizontal movement through these veils, it's easier to be thought of. When you raise your frequency you can move through these veils and begin to meet in their association. When your frequency is low then you go backwards and those associations seem to be miles away, thousands of miles away. But it's the amount of frequency that you have, the vibration you have, you can make a horizontal movement into their associations. So it's not like you're going anywhere, you know traveling and traversing, its reality is just a horizontal movement of frequency. So when they're vibrating very high, their heart and energies are very high, their souls are very powerful, they just move sort of forward movement, horizontal movement and they're in the association with these awliya and with these pious beings. And the shaitans they have a different system where their vibrations are much lower. So they want to take people to a much lower vibration, inject them with things that would change and lower their vibration and then they begin to show things and move them through their portals and through their dimensions. They're not moving forward, they're going through reverse dimensions, much lower frequencies. But to move into the heavenly realms the servants need a much more angelic frequency upon their being because it requires more cleanliness, more purity and this is our more purified light. So think everything on a horizontal line. Shaitans want to bring people backwards and then start sending them through portals, so listen to bad things, mark yourself with bad things, why are you marking yourself? Because those are their energies so that they can what? Begin to show those portals for those people and take them through these lower dimensions. But the people whom purify themselves, their frequency is vibrating so strong that immediately they start moving forward in a horizontal movement into the association of awliya where they're all at that level and at that vibration. So that's what's important is just keep doing your zikr, doing your practice, making tafakkur so that they can begin to send the current upon the servant, they become heated, they feel an energy, they feel overheated, that's a good thing because it means you're vibrating very high now, you have to become superheated, superheated, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri surat al Tirfatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people 
and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.